This is going to be a great sister to sister. The girls are answering this question. Do you care what people think of you? Great question. And also, are you good at keeping secrets? Are you good at keeping secrets? I'm not telling. Okay. Stay tuned. Well, hello and welcome to Sister to Sister. We're so happy that you're with us today. We are five opinionated women of God and we bring questions of the world to you from our heart. So thank you for being with us, we're so grateful. And these questions are a little personal today. So you're gonna get to know us a little bit better. It's gonna be cool. Well, this one is kind of tough. This one says, how do you want to be perceived by people? And should I care what other people think of me? I don't know. Roxy, do um, you? All right, let's start this show off with scripture. Yeah, How's that? Because, yeah. For a change. Yeah. There, we go. there we go. Come on. Galatians 1.10 says, am I now trying to win the approval of human beings mm. or of God? Or mm. am I trying to please people? I think you have to see what your motive is. That's if you good. want the yeah. opinions of others to help grow your character, mm -hmm. to help grow in the way you live and act and conduct yourself in life, it's positive. But if you're trying to change, to compromise your values, to fit in in some way that's not you, I think it's very inappropriate. So we shouldn't care? No, I don't think we could care, but we should use it to perfect, to help ourselves grow instead of using it to make ourselves something we're not. Well, you're shaking your head, what? What do you got? I mean, I probably should care more than I do, but I do not care at I all know. what I other know. people think about me. Mm -hmm. And you know who else didn't care? Jesus. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. It says, Mark 12, 14, and the Pharisees came and said to him, teacher, we know that you are true and do not care about anyone's opinion. Uh-oh. You know who talked about Jesus all the time? The people talked about Jesus. They came and said, you dine with the sinners. Yes. They, right. Jesus didn't care about what his reputation was because he knew what his character was. Mm -hmm. And that's what I care about. My, I care about what Jesus thinks about me, not what other people think about me. Do you me. girls care about what people think? Yeah. I kind of do. Uh, yeah, these are really two different questions. Should I care what others think about me because um, I live for the audience of one. Okay. I'm not answering to them when I stand before Jesus to give an account for my life. I'm going to give an account to him. How people perceive me, I need to, with my life, words, actions, draw people to Christ and to the church. So in that matter, mm -hmm. I do care how people perceive right, me right. and how I am coming across and how I am presenting myself and or living the gospel or being the salt and the light. So I live for the audience of one, but I do care uh, that people are drawn to Christ because of my life. Well, I care what, what people think when I'm faced with a situation that if I'm not godly about it, then they're gonna say, oh, well, she's a church girl. So I care in that mm. regard. How about you, uh -huh. Flo? Oh, okay. Flo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. No. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny because um, since my husband has passed, my perspective on a lot of things has changed. That's for sure. And um, at one time I would have answered and said, I, I don't care. But now I would maybe say, I do care, I have to be honest, mm -hmm. um, but don't let that care be a burden, and there's a difference. Right, right. So the care in, 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 sense, in the sense of being sensitive of all of what you just said, right. you know, um, am I, why, do, why is it a concern to me? Yeah. You know, is this something that is affecting my character? Am I living at a lower level, you know? Um, that is something that I would want to give some thought to. Um, the other thing, uh, you know, Corey, you, you gave a scripture, but you know, in, um, with all due respect, there's different translations and then there is the paraphrase versions of things. And so um, 
I don't necessarily know that Jesus did not completely care about what people thought about him because he also understood, he's the one who said that, you know, he couldn't do it works in his own hometown because of that. He's the one, you right. know what I mean? Because oh, of a yeah. per people's perception of him. He was Joseph's son. He was the, you know, the carpenter's son. So, and because it's his desire that none should perish and he wanted everybody healed, he seen that the perception of him hindered that. And so mm -hmm. um, I kind of think that that is something that we got to give some thought to. When th your perception of me becomes greater than my reception of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. because I want you to have that encounter, mm -hmm. you know, then that's when I believe I have to be a little more watchful. Oh, wow, that's wow. a good perspective. I'm thinking of people yeah. too that are, are literally trapped because of other people's thoughts or words that have been put out on social yeah. media right. Right. and yeah. how people are that's perceiving them. And they, they really, they, they carry those words and those thoughts and they're just trapped. Yeah. And I say, let that go, yeah. live your life right. and be amazing. Right, I think Jesus said, shake off the dust shake and move on. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I'm gonna oh, move on. Wow. I'm gonna move on right now. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna move on. Mm -hmm. This is a similar question and it goes like this. <laughs> Corey, I'm coming to you. <laughs> when you walk into a room, do you want to be noticed or do you want to blend in? What do you think, Kathy? Uh, well, <laughs> I, I think, I kind of think you want to be noticed. How do you not notice? notice gorgeous yeah. girl when she walks in a room? That's like right, you know? Monroe. No, I don't know. I just, I mean, I, my shoes match my hair today, okay? I, I got pink highlights. I, I, I've always been, since I was a child, I didn't like blending in. I've always wanted unique things. I've always wanted to be unique. I always looked for unique clothes, unique jewelry, unique shoes. Not even just the things I wore, just being, being in theater. And it's just, it's just how God made me. Right. He designed yeah. right. me that right. way. That's the personality he gave me. Mm -hmm. And not everybody's built that way. And it right. doesn't make me right. better or worse That's than anybody right. else. Right. That's the personality he gave me. Is it a blessing? Is it a curse? <laughs> a little bit of both. <laughs> I would venture to say, because we're all sitting here, that none of us just want to blend in. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Otherwise, I don't think we would be here in this seat, so in this you, hot seat. When you walk into a room... I want to change the room. I want right. to change the environment. I want to lift it up. I want to... Do, I want to electrify it. I mean, I remember same thing being little and if my mom and dad would take us out to dinner and somebody over there singing happy birthday and I would stand up on the table and, and sing happy birthday. And my mom who wants to blend in is like under the table and the Lord told her, you've got to let her yes. be her. Right, right. But I don't think you want to stand out or do oh, you? Know? No. I don't know. I she does. The, the pride She's in me a, does. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. And okay. Uh, you know, Galatians yeah. 2.20 says, it's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Yeah, good. Amen. So if Christ can stand out, then amen. At my, but I have to say, my one child, I won't say who it is or anything, <laughs> tell, has yeah. told me in the last few months, Remember, Mom, it's not about you. You. <laughs> you know, the kids are awesome. They're, they help you. They know who you are and yes, see. And so it grounds me again. Mm -hmm. Am I show, I don't mean to be spiritual, mm -hmm. you know, hyper spiritual, but am I exemplifying Christ, Christ. or right. is it me? Now, personality is great because people are drawn to Corey's personality, to yours, yeah. to Flo's, yeah. and to all of our personalities because there's something attractive and then we could lead them to Christ. So I think it's a nice thing that we're so different. And yeah. When you said about the kids, then it reminded me of something, how you said, your daughter said, it's not about you, mom. It wasn't my daughter. Right. Oh, okay. I didn't say someone who else. Was. Okay. Well, <laughs> my don't daughter. Assume he gender. Would he would <laughs> Your son, one of oh, your five. You are so <laughs> That's why you draw so. I do. Yeah. But I have to say that when you talk about children, my whole life I've been on television. So I've been, I mean, I'm not so great, but I'm, I'm just a happy, peppy cheerleader person. Yeah. And my daughter was so horrified 
really. Because in seventh grade, all the children would say, your mom's on TV, your mom's the shop and save lady. And my daughter was absolutely embarrassed of that. Oh. She was, because it took me and I stood out. Yeah. So therefore, she was supposed to stand out. She didn't want to. Was, yes. When you're in seventh grade, coming from the Catholic school into the public school, you just want to blend in. <laughs> so when I think about the people that are around us, even my husband George, I'm always out there and he's always blending in. So sometimes being out front isn't exactly what I think I should do. Flo, to you. Um, I have to say both. I have to say both. Um, do I want to blend in? Absolutely. I think that's the beauty of becoming cross-cultural. Mm -hmm. I think this is how you reach people. I think it's important and imperative that you connect. Even when you travel, you know, um, they always encourage you to learn a little bit of the language so people know, yeah. I think enough right. about you, you to know how to right. say hello in yeah. your right. language, right. Or say thank you in your that's language. Right. So I do want to blend because I want to connect. And that's, that's what correct. Jesus that's did. Right. Yes. And isn't it funny right. that he didn't blend in with the church real well? But anyway, that's another right. subject. That's right. so, that's and then it. to be noticed, yeah. absolutely. I, but Flo doesn't want to be noticed. I want Christ in me, the hope of glory to right. be noticed so it can right. draw on the hope in you. I want you to have an encounter with God when you have that encounter with me. I want my face to be lit a flint in the midst of the people mm -hmm. because that's what that's is going to bring change. I want to be that's a good. carrier and a courier of God's glory because what? We are changed from glory to glory. So it's not so much that I want to be noticed because as believe it or not, I kind of like the back scene, yes. you know, uh, because it's more about what's getting done, yes. you know, right. and sometimes you can get more done and you'll be more productive if you're not the one in the front because they won't connect it to a personality. Mm -hmm. They will connect it to that encounter. Yeah, that's yes. good. That's, that's, that's good. such a good yeah. one. It reminds me of the scripture that Paul says, I've become all things to all people Amen. so that I'll I might preach. win some. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's good. Cross that's good. Culture. I love yeah. that that's too. Preach. Oh, I love that scripture, lady. Yeah. Good. Thank but you. I have a good question too. And I, Amy, I'm going to ask you because of this, I mean, not just because you're a pastor, but I'm going to ask you. Okay. What gets you through difficult times? And I know you've had them. Yes. We're either going into a trial, coming out of a trial, or, you know, we've just gotten through a trial. Um, so, hands down, my Bible. Like, I can always tell when I'm not in my Bible, the difficult things become more magnified. And when I'm in my Bible, it's like words of, it's like words of refreshing and living water. It's like, it's a grounding. It's a, it's a, this is true north right here. And everything else then becomes peripheral instead of the main stage. My Bible, my husband, who is an absolute rock, he is so, so full of such wisdom and insight and revelation and, and the word, he just, the word comes out of him and faith comes out of him. When I'm going through a difficult time, that's the guy I want in my corner. And the kicking prayer team at our church. Mm. They literally, they pray for us every day. Mm. And sometimes I feel like, I don't even, I look back and think, how did I go through that? Right. And it was almost like just two hands just lift us and carry us through difficult times. And so my Bible, my husband, and our prayer team. All right. All right. So can I just kind of jump in here on this? Because what I have recently gone through, I, and maybe this will help somebody else, you know, because I can sit here and tell you prayer, the word, all of that, and it definitely played a role. But in the midst of my grief, in the midst of some of the difficult things I've been through, there have been times that I have laid my eyes on the word, read the word, but I could not feel the penetration. Not saying mm -hmm. that the word doesn't work, mm -hmm. you know, but it, I was just in that place that I can't even explain it to you. Um, so I can't honestly say that I was getting moved by, by that. There were times I've been in a time that I, I could not pray, you know, um, and I think sometimes we kind of slide right over that and we make people think, not intentionally, you guys, you know, but we make people think if you pray hard enough and if you stay in the no, word hard right. enough, it's going to change. Right. No, I'm going to tell you what some of my relief has been, especially in this season of leave, losing my husband. Me screaming, me crying, releasing emotions, me going for counseling, 
you know, and then that being combined with the work. Because there was, I, I was so full of whatever it was, grief, disappointment, hurt, pain, that it's not that I don't know the word. I, you know, and then- You know the word. It, you know, it's not that I'm not familiar with Holy Spirit, but I needed to get familiar with Holy Spirit. Yes, I knew him as my teacher. Now I need him as my comforter. I knew Jesus as my Lord and Savior, but, and I, I even knew uh, him as Abba. I know God as Abba God, but now I got to get to know Jesus as my husband. And so it's a whole new journey. Well, I'm, I'm sure, Flo, that someone who's watching us today was totally blessed by that and, and touched so. by that. And losing mm. your husband is something that you know, we, we can't really identify with. And I'm so grateful that you are able to share your heart. Mm -hmm. So we're able to share our hearts with you at home. So stay right there. We have more Sister to Sister coming up right after this. <laughs> <laughs> Coming back, when you're gone and having your coffee, we're still na 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 na. Amy had something really yes. cool to add with Flo's situation. Well, I'm thinking about, you know, the, the death of a loved one is a trauma you're in right. your life. Right. It is the most beloved person of your heart, mind, and soul. And so that is, to me, a little different than a difficult right. time where somebody betrayed you or hurt you or you lost your job. Trauma and difficult, I think, are two different right. conversations. Well, thank you. So that's yeah, what they yeah. said when you were getting your coffee. But I wanted you to hear from Amy's heart, too. But this question, oh boy, I don't know. Are you good at keeping secrets? <laughs> Give a time when you were not. I'm not good about secrets. I don't like secrets. <laughs> what, do you like secrets? I do like people to keep confidences. Well, confidence sounds better than secrets. Yes, I call it a confidence because perverse lips cause conflict, the scripture says That's in Proverbs. But Amen. one who shares a secret or a confidence stirs up strife and loses their friends. Yeah, that's uh -huh. the word. And then in my case, as a lawyer, you can lose your job. That's right, that's right. You're <laughs> so a good she's one. a good one. Yeah. 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 I have, and you know what? Keeping a confidence takes training. It does. It does. Like and anything discipline. else, discipline, mm -hmm. training, it all goes together. You talk about going to the gym or whatever. You got to go to the gym mm -hmm. for your heart and soul mm -hmm. and mind. We like to share things because many times we think we know better or we've got something nobody else has. That is all pride. And I have learned that, you know, just sit back, zip the lip mm -hmm. or walk away. I have walked away from people sharing secrets. If I knew them well enough, I said, listen, guys, I'm not going here. Good. I think, you know, I don't point my finger at somebody else yet. But I, you have to walk away because you do. You stir up strife that's yeah. sinful. Well, secrets seem like gossip to me. You? I, I, just, I just love everything Roxy just said yeah, because the right. truth of the matter is that, you know, I, I know nobody else has this problem, but <laughs> there's something in the scripture called an itchy ear. <laughs> and every now and then, like, you know, oh, and, and, and my friends, if anybody's watching it knows me, they'll, they'll laugh because they know this is true. You know, like I might call you up and go, hey, Corey, so what was that going, what's, what's going on uh, with Amy? I'm not yeah. asking for no spiritual reason. I just want to know. Right. You know right. what I mean? So right. I don't even try to like camouflage you like I'm calling for prayer. Yeah. Or I'm calling yeah. intercede. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's like, but the word talks about having an itchy ear. And it's so true what you're mm -hmm. saying about having the discipline um, to not do that mm -hmm. because the other thing is, if somebody does it to me, then I'm heartbroken because I confided right. in you yes. and I was expecting you to keep it. And so what gives me the right to do the opposite? Right. Nothing does. Anybody mm -hmm. have something on secrets? Mm -hmm. I mean, just when people mm -hmm. are like, they tell me we're having a baby, but nobody else right, knows. Right. Or, oh, we're yeah. engaged or we're a couple oh, now. Okay, and I'm yeah. like, you know, and then you don't know when it's public. You know, there's like Facebook yeah. public, and then yeah. the, and it's yeah. like, oh my gosh, yeah. I don't know. So I just gotta like keep it quiet. That's right. Well, I'm yeah. gonna go to the next question because I love this, and I and you've shared so much with us. But mm -hmm. what do you do when you're having a bad day? What makes it better? Commanding my day. Come on. Mm. Yeah, commanding my day. Command uh, this question. Come yeah. on. Oh, you know right. what? Because I, I think I have the right. 
I, I have the God in me that created the universe. And, and, you know, chaos is where God thrived. It's where he created the world, you know? So I can speak into chaos. And sometimes I have to be reminded of that, you know? So when I get up and it seems like my day's not going well, you know, mm. um, depending on what my prayer time was like that there morning, you, go, you know? There you go. <laughs> I might throw a little bit of a hissy fit, but you know, (laughs) no, not me. I don't have those kind of problems. That was a lying spirit in case you didn't recognize it. But anyway, (laughs) the, um, to get up and, you know, I have the right, I have the authority to bind powers, principalities, wickedness, and rulers in high places. I have the right, I can command the sun, the moon, the stars. You may say, wow, she's really out there. But no, if you study your scriptures, you Mm -hmm. have the right to do that. It was a prophet who said for it not to rain. It was a prophet who prophesied, you know, uh, for it to rain again. It was a prophet who, uh, you know, as God said, "What, what about this valley of dry bones? The prophet had to prophesy to the dry bones. So I can prophesy to my day. That's right. right. Well, you know what? I I don't want to end this show without getting to this last question because I want to go to Corey, mostly because her husband, Tim, is in the audience. That's all. (laughs) I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And this question is, I'm glad I don't have to answer. What is your love language? Oh, my gosh. I... Honestly, cannot stand the love languages. I be locked either. into right. like that I have to have this one love language. Like right. I love them all. <laughs> Give them all to me. My poor husband yes. is a affirmation <laughs> service. Chocolate <Just talk. laughs> <Just talk. laughs> diamond. He has, it's like he has to figure out Shoes. what's today's love what's language. Oh my god. Oh, okay. We gotta pray for <laughs> Um, I would say if like I had to lock in on something, it would probably be words of affirmation, but I do like gifts, but there's a caveat. It's like you have to, it has to be something I want and it has to be like, you have to get a good deal on it or use a coupon. Oh, <laughs> my God. Like, I just, yeah, oh, the love man, language book, throw good. it away because I cannot stand it. Well, I want to know if you have a scripture about love language. I didn't understand the question. Okay. <laughs> This is history. I've never heard those words out of your mouth. <laughs> what is happening? You don't I'll understand the okay, question. So I will say this about it. I like people to communicate and listen. Okay. So when you're a good listener, I know it. Okay. And so I am trying to, yes, thank you for that. <laughs> I am trying to be a good listener because the Bible says slow to speak, quick to listen. Amen. I mean, when we're slow to speak, we're showing other people we love them. We prefer them. Let me hear what's going on in your life before I throw out everything that I'm concerned about. So the love language is quiet. I so, like that. I don't even know. I'm like you. I've never, well, I've never read the book. I don't know much about the love languages. I know that there's a book about it. Yes. I don't know what mine is. <laughs> I do know this much about me, though. I don't, like, if you've done something, you need to apologize to me. Don't come giving me no cake. Don't bring me no chocolate. Don't bring me no flowers. No gifts. I need a verbal apology. Words of affirmation. No, well, I, okay. I, I have grown. Is that what it is? Yep. Well, wait. Okay. So your We're love language words is, of is words of what apology. Is it? Words, words of, of apology. apology. Is that what it is? Or well, affirmation? Or something. Yeah. This, all, all, and I, I have grown in the Lord because I used to be, if you stepped on my left toe, you could not come back and say, I'm sorry. You got to be, I'm sorry for stepping on your left toe. <laughs> and I'm at sorry. At 2 o'clock this I, afternoon. I am sorry to cut you off. <laughs> ah, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. offended. I'm a sorry. You're sorry for cutting me off yeah. on sister to sister yeah. at what time? At, nine, yeah. at 10 31. <laughs> My love language is food. Thank you, George. <laughs> hey, we'll be right back to wrap this up. <laughs> That was a fun show, lots of personal stuff. And we always end sister to sister with a scripture. Today's scripture is found in Proverbs 3, verses 3 and 4. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. 
then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. And I wanted to show you this because I was so excited when our producer picked this scripture. This verse actually hangs in my living room. My sister made this for me because she loves me. She wrote it on the tablet of my wall. <laughs> this good. actual That's scripture. Hard. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablet of your heart. And I just love this scripture because I feel like it's a love letter from the Lord. And I just love writing things down. I'm a note taker. And you can be a note taker too. Write this, start today. Write, start with writing this scripture down. Because love and faithfulness, God's love and faithfulness is eternal. It will never leave you. Write it down, write it down right now. Write it on the tablet of your heart so that it won't leave you. Bind it around your neck. And if you're having trouble really grasping onto that, call in today. Someone will talk to you about that. We want you to know God's love. We know God's love. We love you. And the sisters want you to know that eternal love and faithfulness of the Lord. Well, Corey's love language seems to be communicating to you the love of Christ. Uh -huh. But at the end of All Sister to Sisters, we do this little scripture and it goes like this. As iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a woman or a sister sharpen the other. You see, these girls make me a much better Kathy. See you again.